It's truly amazing uh, the number of conditions that respond favorably to cannabis. It heals in any circumstance with any condition. We're looking at an unexcelled wonder plant, herbal medicine that has no comparison. Cannabis is found in every major materia medica that has ever been written. It was included in the United States Pharmacopeia from 1854 until 1941. The founder of modern medicine is a physician named Sir William Osler, who was prominent around the turn of the 19th to the 20th century. He wrote the first textbook of internal medicine, and in that textbook, he said that cannabis was the most effective medication for the treatment of migraine headaches. The first modern research that was done on cannabis was done in 1949 that demonstrated its usefulness in treating epilepsy. I have a number of people who don't have epilepsy when they use cannabis regularly. Cannabis is remarkably well suited to our anatomy and physiology, even in the event one smokes it. Marijuana was widely used in the 19th century for the treatment of asthma. And in the 1970s, we found that uh, marijuana uh, has a bronchodilator effect. It's because of the THC in marijuana. What is the evidence that marijuana smoking, habitual marijuana smoking, can lead to lung cancer? With respect to the development of lung cancer, uh, we uh, found no evidence of any increased risk of lung cancer uh, occurrence in association with marijuana smoking alone. The THC actually has an anti-tumoral effect. And uh, these are studies that were done both in experimental animals and in cell culture systems and for different kinds of cancer. For lung cancer, breast cancer, thyroid cancer, prostate cancer, gliomas, brain cancer, that the development and growth, or the growth actually, of the tumor is, is suppressed by THC, and metastases are also suppressed. There was a study done on AIDS patients by Dr. Donald Abrams of UCSF to specifically determine whether or not the use of cannabis had an adverse effect on AIDS patients. And rather than finding that it had an adverse effect, he found that it had a favorable effect and that it counteracted AIDS wasting syndrome. Cannabis uh, is useful in relieving people's pain. Uh, people are able to decrease the amount of opiates that they're taking and in some instances to stop taking opiates entirely uh, for pain control. Antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, smooth muscle relaxant, it's also an anti-spasmodic. It's particularly effective in relieving pain from connective tissue disorders, from arthritis, from fibromyalgia, from systemic lupus, from reflex sympathetic dystrophy, a whole host of conditions that we don't really understand very well. People seem to get a good relief from cannabis. From a medical viewpoint, cannabis has no overdose potential. It's helpful in dealing with the anxiety of people that have Alzheimer's disease. It's helpful in dealing with the muscle spasms that are associated with Parkinson's disease. Cannabis has an unexcelled record in terms of providing safe and effective sleep. We did a little study of people with Crohn's disease and found that many of them were able to stop using steroids and stop using other medications that they had taken for their Crohn's, that they had uh, less diarrhea, they had less abdominal pain. It was a true miracle for them. Here you have a substance that makes you feel better, has an overdose potential, returns you to your cognitive level of functioning. We've got 15,000 studies that have been done, both basic science and clinical studies, that have demonstrated over and over again the medicinal value of cannabis. I think there's a very bright future for medical cannabis in this country.